Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Grace Episcopal Church. I'm Father Charles Ulick. It is great to have you with us this morning for uh, morning prayer. Please join us in standing and singing from your blue hymnal, number 524, number 524, I love thy kingdom, Lord. We begin on page 79 in your red book, the Book of Common Prayer, page 79. Send out your light of your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Psalm 43, verse 3. It is great to have you here with us. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Please, if you are able, please kneel with me or remain standing. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, please stand. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in beauty and of holiness. Come, let us adore him. 
page 82, the Venite prayer from Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear God's sacred words. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, verses 7 to 13. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out, I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all, all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now a reading from Psalm chapter 69 verses 8 through 11 and 18 through 20. We will read the psalm responsibly by half verse. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach. And shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred. An alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you have fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but it was turned to my reproach. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6, verses 1b to 11. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin 
go on living in it. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand with me and go to our, the hymnal once again for our gospel sequence hymn, number 679. Surely it is God who saves me. We'll sing the first verse before the gospel and the second verse after. Trusting him I shall not fear. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the twelve apostles, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what, I, what you hear whispered proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, rather Fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs on your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against his mo her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes 
will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May what I am about to say be in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, this past week I was up at camp, All Saints, working with our high school teenagers. And our theme there uh, this, this week uh, and for camp uh, for the next several weeks is superheroes. You know, DC Comics, Marvel. I know, some of you are old, but not that old. I mean, I used to grow up looking at comics. I still do, actually, from time to time. They're wonderful. Wonderful, well, they're not called comics. They're actually called live art now. Or Anyhow, superheroes. So I, I was talking to the kids up there about how their super gifts that they have are not just fictitious, but they actually are wonderful gifts from God, and that each and every one of them and all of you have a super gift. You know, that in our scriptures today, we hear God telling us, of, actually, he was actually giving a commencement speech to his disciples in many ways. He was telling them some things that they needed to know about as they were going to be going out. There are going to be troubles. There are going to be people who aren't going to believe what you say. There are going to be times when people may even want to hurt you. But have no fear, he says. These are the things that will happen. They have happened to me and they will happen to you. And so Jesus sends his disciples out for Matthew's gospel, and he's, rem he's reminding them of just that. He's not sugarcoating anything. He's making it very clear that the message that you hear, because what people don't like is change. And what my Father has sent me to do is to let you know that there is a different message. You don't need to practice and worship many gods. Well, even though many of us still have those things around us, even in our society, we have things like money, gold, precious minerals, and stones. People treasure them. They spend more time taking time for themselves instead of taking time for God. 
There will be times when we will be tempted. The evil one will rear its head and say to you, you don't need to go to church today. We don't need God in our lives. People are like that. Atheists, agnostics, people will say we don't need church. Matter of fact, we don't need to be disciples. The work that we have been asked to do is to be good stewards of how we are practicing our faith. Pa practicing our faith is stewardship. It's like cultivating the land. It's like using a superpower to help making things right and just where we see injustice. Actually, that was our theme. Hannah and myself, we created the Justice League for, J for Jesus was what our theme was for this past week. And so the examples you give are exactly your superpowers, whatever they might be. Maybe you love to bake. Maybe you like to talk to people. Maybe your gift is a skill that you can practice like medicine or law or, even greater, a teacher. Whatever those skills might be, hone them and pass them on. It reminds me a little bit of the story of Hagar. I don't know if you remember her in the Old Testament. Hagar was the uh, mistress for uh, Abraham because Sarah was barren. She could not have children. And so Hagar took a lot of grief from Sarah because she couldn't have children. And because she had Ishmael, she thought maybe this was God's will. Sarah was saying that. And so both Hagar and Sarah became best friends. Hey, uh, Sarah ended up having uh, Isaac. And her prayers were answered. And see, from Jeremiah, our first reading, he reminds us today that you'll never be left alone. Even though people, we all die, and we will have separations from time to time, there will be times when we think that we're all by ourselves. But you're not. God is with you. God is walking with you by your side. He reminds us that there's hope in the world, that you are not forsaken, but that God will not leave us orphan. Just like he didn't abandon Hagar or Sarah, he reminds us that God's grace is with us always and that your superpower comes from God. Your superpower is you because God made you. And God, as I told the kids, and as you've probably heard this before, God doesn't make junk. You are precious in God's eyes. And so just as the prophets before us and as Jesus was sending out his disciples two by two, and even sometimes that partner may not irritate you on the way, you can always lean on God to help and give you comfort and to give you right direction. Even when your partner, like another disciple, isn't always catching it and on, on top of his or her game. So know that God is with you. God does not abandon you. And even as you travel this summer, and you go and visit people or on vacations, God is with you in your travel. Take some time. Go to a new church. Check out maybe your relative's church. Support them in their faith. Be the superpower. Be the superhero that God has baptized you to be. Loving, forgiving, and charitable. Amen.
Let us now stand and turn back to our Book of Common Prayer on page 120. Page 120, and let us recite the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father of the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He has descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the, the prayer that our Lord gave to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon the earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. If you are able, please kneel with me or remain standing. O oh Lord, make our, us our, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation for your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Page 123. If you'd please join me in reading the Colic Prayer for Sundays together. Lord God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, triumphed over the powers of death and prepared for us our place in the new Jerusalem, grant that we who have this day given thanks for the res resurrection, may we praise you in his, that city, which he is the light, and where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And for the colic for peace. Together, let us pray. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our our minds may be fixed on the doing your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Turning to page 125. Excuse me. Let us do our prayers of the people prior to the general thanksgiving. If you turn to page four in your bulletin, page four. Children of God, praise the Lord. Our Lord God is faithful and hears our prayers, so let us pray. In your great mercy, O God, answer us with your unfailing help. 
to the baptized, O God, grant newness of life. Bless Grace Church and all its members. Strengthen us to follow in the footsteps of your Son. In your great mercy, O God. Answer us with your unfailing help. To the nations of earth, especially the United States of America, its leaders, and its democratic republic, O God of hosts, grant freedom and peace. Deliver the lives of the needy from the hands of the evildoers, and help us in the pursuit of happiness. In your great mercy, O God. Answer us with your unfailing help. To your created order, O God, grant your help. May the water, soil, and air be made clean and healthy again. We also pray for all those who are celebrating their birthdays this week. Rick Colthart, Will Hancock, Camille Mathis, Norma Rankin, Nancy F. Black, and Counts, and for all those celebrating their wedding anniversaries, especially Laura and Michael Taylor, and Mary and Billy Harper. We thank you for all the blessings in our lives. In your great mercy, O oh God. Answer us with your unfailing help. To our community of Paducah and surrounding communities of Western Kentucky, O oh God, grant your deliverance. Set us free from violence and destruction. Make safe our streets. In your great mercy, O oh God. Answer us with your unfailing help. To those who feel the deep about to swallow them, O oh God, grant your salvation. In your great compassion, turn to all those in need. We especially pray for those traveling this summer, for our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, and his, as he recuperates from his illness. For those on our parish and military prayer list found in our bulletin, for those prayers written in our book of prayerful intentions, for the poor, the hungry, and the imprisoned, for the safe seasonal weather, especially here in Western Kentucky and around our nation, for the people of Ukraine and the end of war, heal those afflicted with disease or sickness. In your great mercy, O oh God, Answer us with your unfailing help. To the dead, O oh God, grant life eternal with Christ. We pray especially for Betty Schubert's great-granddaughter, baby, Melina, and for Betty's grandson and his wife, John and Claudia, and for Bill Baxter and his family with the recent loss of their mother, Sarah June Baxter, this past week. For those lives lost in the war in Ukraine and for the families in our faith community that we have recently lost. May all those who have been baptized into the death of Christ be united with him in his resurrection. In your great mercy, O oh God. Answer us with your unfailing help. Strengthened by your spirit, may we never be ashamed of our faith, but confess your name before others so to acknowledge your holy presence by your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear our prayers this day and throughout this coming week. We ask this through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, turning back to our Book of Common Prayer, to page 125. Let us pray together our general thanksgivings. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, your innumerable love. 
in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking to you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory all the ages. Amen. Please be seated. If I could have the ushers with the offertory, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up as a sacrifice unto God. Please be seated. I have a couple of announcements uh, for our Sunday. Uh, lots of actually. It, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming and being with us here at Grace Episcopal Church, especially if you're a visitor. It is great to have you with us here today. I'd like to thank uh, Lucretia and Sam Wittes uh, for the beautiful fl altar flowers that adorn our altar today in thanksgiving for uh, the church here. 
I'd like to invite you all to uh, Fletcher Hall, right through those red doors, that red door there, uh, for some donuts and coffee right after our service this morning. We also have a very special ministry, a uh, flower ministry, uh, with some wonderful fresh zinnias out of our flower garden uh, that you can take home to adorn your, your home with uh, as well. If you would be interested in uh, uh, sponsoring a Sunday for donuts uh, or to help us with hospitality, uh, with making coffee, etc., cetera, uh, please see me. Uh, we are trying to put together a hospitality team for that uh, ministry. Today, this evening, uh, uh, the Paducah Urban Mission Project, PUMP, is beginning for our youth groups and for teens here in Paducah. And so if you are interested, we still have two spots open. If you'd like to help with some of the mission projects that they're doing here in our own community, uh, that'll go through the rest of this week. Uh, please see Hannah for more details. We have two more spots open uh, if, you'd like, if your teenager would like to participate. Uh, Kimberly will be out of the office starting Wednesday. Uh, obviously, I mean, I'll be here uh, through the week. Uh, so if you have any parish, minister, uh, parish uh, office uh, business to take care of, uh, please let me know or contact uh, Kimberly before she leaves on vacation uh, through the 4th of July. And then myself, I'll be leaving uh, at the end of this week. I'll be on vacation uh, from the 30th through July 14th. My father is uh, celebrating his 96th birthday, and so we're going up to celebrate with him and my, I have a little family reunion back in Nebraska. So my family and I are going to be gone for a few weeks. Uh, if there are any pastoral emergencies, please contact the parish office um, or myself. Uh, I have two priests that are on call for pastoral emergencies uh, while I am gone. Then Hannah, <laughs> it's like the entire staff is leaving, uh, uh, July 2nd through the July 8th, she's going to be at the really cool event called the Episcopal Youth Event, EYE. goes on every uh, three years. Uh, about 500 teenagers are gathering in Baltimore, Maryland, and so Hannah, and is uh, going to be working uh, that event uh, with a bunch of other youth ministers uh, gathering in Baltimore, Maryland. So she'll be gone that week as well. If you'd like to participate in uh, writing cards or uh, calling on parishioners who you haven't seen in a while or maybe going out and visiting them, please contact me. We've started a new ministry of visiting uh, members uh, who have not been with us or who can't come because of health concerns. And so uh, we have uh, several people who have started me, started to help me with that ministry, and it is a great ministry. Uh, uh, writing a card, getting a card in the mail, you know, stale mail, it's not virtual. People really enjoy that, so, or a phone call. So hope you can, uh, would like to do that kind of ministry. Please contact me. Again, uh, you're, uh, thank you so much for coming uh, today for our Sunday service. And if you're uh, visiting, uh, please come and join us again. Or if you're more interested in the Episcopal Church, please come and join us for continued services. Uh, we'll have a Holy Eucharist starting again uh, uh, next Sunday, as well on July 4th weekend as well. Morning prayer is conducted uh, one uh, Sunday a month at this service. We now turn back to our Book of Common Prayer to page 126. Page 126. If you'd like, let us pray once again and ask the Lord to bless us with the prayer of St. Chrysostom. If you'd please join me in standing. And let us pray that prayer together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. 
have promised through our well-beloved Son, Jesus. Uh, there two or three are gathered in his, in his name. We will be in the midst of him. Fulfill, O oh, oh, oh Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Let us now sing our recessional hymn, number, number 530, number 530 in your blue hymnal. Spread, O Jesus, spread, O spread your thou mighty word. Okay, I'll do it the same way. Let us go forth and be the church. Alleluia, alleluia.